Okay, so why don't you talk a little bit about the background here that you're working with the county on? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we were approached by the the Nebraska DEQ probably about a year and a half ago, and and you know, the DEQ is essentially the policing organization for cattle feeders in the state of Nebraska, and so we've had an ongoing you know negotiation with the DEQ they have certain requirements that we have to you know follow and and we're in the process of doing that and you know uh, I was actually uh, had been talking to the county for probably six to eight months <clears throat> and uh, the last sit down that we had uh, they asked me if I could do some things and I said yeah I would but I needed some time and so what happened yesterday um, you know, as far as uh, what went on in that meeting, I mean, I had no knowledge of it. I had no knowledge of the meeting. I had no knowledge that it was a closed session, an open session. And so, you know, I find out about it all secondhand from a news reporter. And uh, which, you know, to me, I guess is, uh, uh, you know, it's very surprising conduct to me. I mean, I'm out here being honest and upfront. And, uh, uh, you know, and I get blindsided, and and I think I think it's unfair. I think I've got a I've got a point, um, and you know I've never got to sat down with the county board or or uh, anybody like that and actually tell them my side of the story. You know, it's not just cut and dried. Uh, there's discrepancies, and they need to be investigated. And you know what? I can't stop my business. Um, you know, I, I, I've been down there, I've been forthcoming, and, uh, and out of the blue, uh, because maybe somebody called the right lawyer or something, you know, I'm sitting out here trying to keep the business together, and I get blindsided. How many head do you have? Yeah, you know, it, it varies. I mean, you know, it's, you know, the cattle thing is a seasonal thing. You know, in the fall of the year, you, you get quite a few cattle in, and then, you know, you market your cattle all year long. Summertime, you kind of empty out because it gets hot. And we run cattle in the pens. We run cattle out in the cornfields. Um, you know, and, and, you know, we're just out here trying to make a living. So what's the acreage uh, like for the pen and cornfield? Well, you know, we, we, I mean, we'll lease anywhere from, you know, 500 to 1,500 acres. And how many head are on that? I mean, at, at what's the minimum, what would you have? Well, you know, the, the, the thing about it and the thing that I've tried to tell that, you know, at least the county people that I've been in contact with was there's different sets of rules. There's just different sets of rules for the county. There's different sets of rules for the state. There's different sets of rules for temporary cattle, uh, temporary fencing. And, you know, to a producer and somebody out here that's trying to make a living, it's confusing. You know, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know why, <laughs> if it's okay with the state of Nebraska, why isn't it okay with the county of Hall County? You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't start all this. <laughs> well, you said DEQ contacted you. Yeah. And what did they ask you to do? Well, uh, you know, they, we have to, uh, we have to, uh, supply them with what they call a nutrient uh, management program and that is essentially you know how you're going to uh, get rid of your manure and, and the acres that are needed to do that they look at your drainages to make sure that you're not draining onto somebody um, they might require you to put in you know lagoons if, if that's what it takes uh, and, and that's a process that's an ongoing process and that process can take anywhere from two to five years and they have steps that you go through and, and, and you follow the steps and, and eventually you get to the end point where, where the DEQ is completely satisfied. But that's not an overnight thing. Well, when did you start this operation? Um, this, this particular uh, yard was, uh, I bought this ground in February of 2006. Okay, so, I mean, this didn't grow up overnight either. No, no, and that's what I've told the county. I mean, you just don't wake up some morning and all of a sudden, boom, you got too many cattle. It doesn't work like that. You know, it's a gradual or a gradual progression. 
And when you get to a certain point, then, then you know, you're going to be talking to the DEQ and they're going to ask you to do some things. And so if you want to be in the cattle feeding business, you comply with those things. Did, did you ever think that you needed to check on numbers? Or well, yeah, I mean, I knew we were getting close. Um, you know, and, and, and again, I mean, you know, we do a lot of different things here. I mean, we'll run cattle out in cornfields, which again is, you know, temporary fencing, temporary situations. And, and then we, we, we do what the market tells us to do. I mean, we have to be profitable out here. And if, and, and if the market tells us that we need to finish the cattle to make more money, that's what we do. If it, if it tells us to sell them as feeder cattle, then again, that's what we do. And we try to be as versatile as we can. Okay, I think the county attorney used the word sham yesterday that you were trying to divide up ownership to basically half the herd so that you could meet the distance regulations from residents. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit well, about Well, sure, that? yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I mean, I, I, again, I mean, I, 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 I think that's insulting. I, I think... Uh, uh, I think it questions my integrity and my character and the reason that we did that is because I've got two young guys that work for me that, that come here seven days a week and, and work their tails off. And every January, you know what happens, you got to give raises, right? Everybody wants more money. And so to give those young guys a start in the business, I made those people partners, or those two guys partners, on that particular parcel of ground. Because if somebody doesn't help these young people, there's not going to be anybody left in it. And it just happened to work out that, you know, we could make that a separate entity. And we did. It has to have separate books, it has to have separate ownership, it has to have a separate bank account. And that's why we did it. My motivation wasn't to sham the county. I've been forthcoming. I've been down there 15 times to talk to those people. And I, and, I, and I personally take that as an insult. You're right on the whole Howard County line. Yes, I am. Is it, do you have cattle on both? both I do at times, yes I do. So how do the regulations differ? Well, they're the completely same? different. They're, they're, they're completely different. You know, Howard County actually just designated their county as a livestock friendly county. And they have a they have a complete different set of regulations. Okay, and I think the county attorney said yesterday too that he felt that Mr. Koloff was more interested in changing the zoning regulations than complying with the zoning regulations we have now. Um, have you asked for some changes? Well, I, I absolutely have, and and, and 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 it's not just for me. I mean. You know, these, these motives aren't selfish. You, you know, I've given my whole adult life to this industry. Okay, this, I started this with nothing. And, and, I, and, and, and the bottom line here is, is I want to do what's best for the county and the future of cattle feeding in Hall County. You know, and, 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 I, and I've told them, you know what? You know, the fact of the matter is this. Is the county still operating on their 2004 budgets? No, they're not. Are they getting paid their 2004 salaries? No. Do you know when the last time they wrote their zoning laws? 2004. You know, my labor has doubled. My expenses have tripled. My repairs have doubled. And, and it's just not my feed yard. You got you got 15 other operations in this county, my size, give or take. And so you know what? They need to get up with times here. Do they have permits too? Do you? They haven't issued a conditional use permit in, in Hall County in probably 10 years. For a feedlot. Absolutely. And as far as I'm concerned, they're hanging out and hanging me out in the wind to twist here. So what changes do you want to see? What uh, you want to see a change in the setback? Well, you know, I, I think their setbacks are somewhat reasonable, but but the problem is this: they give you a thousand animal units in the first thirteen hundred and twenty feet. In the next thirteen hundred and twenty feet, they give you an additional four thousand animal units. Okay, but they jump from a thousand animal units to five thousand animal units in thirteen hundred and twenty feet. And that's not reasonable anymore. 
because of the economics of the cattle business. What should it be? It, it, they should have a sliding scale. Th there should be something in between 1,000 and 5,000 head. That is reasonable and sensible and workable. Okay, the county attorney said yesterday also that he was going to write up a demand letter, which of course you haven't seen because he really hasn't written it yet. Right. Uh, I don't know what the time frame on that was going to be. I think he's still thinking about it. Yesterday in the meeting, he mentioned somewhere between ten days and two weeks. Well, it's impossible. That, and how can I? How can I? The cattle cycle here. How much time would you need? To well, I I need six months, minimum. Because any time you pick cattle up, it's, it costs money. Got to pay a truck, got to stand the shrink, and then they have to be relocated. And I've emphasized time and time again down there that I'm willing to work with them. I'm willing to work with them. I've told them that 10 times. I, I've never shunned them. I, I've been upfront with them. I've been honest with them. And then they come at me with this deal. You know, I, I'm a reasonable person. I think Shubin said you've increased the size of the herd since the time you've been negotiating with the county. Is that accurate? Uh, no, that wouldn't be accurate. Okay. No. Um, I'm not, I don't understand your lingo here. Okay. Mm -hmm. is the truck. What, what is the shrink? Is that? Well, when you when you pick cattle them? up and move them, okay, there's going to be there's going to be weight loss. Okay. Okay. I thought that's what it meant. Right. Right. Any any time that I'm you any time you disrupt the normal function, you know, you're going to have repercussions. Okay. So you would need six months to make any changes in the size of the herd. Well, you know, give or take. I mean, it's all, you know, I mean, it's somewhat flexible, but but to request something to be done in two weeks is is virtually impossible okay. because as cattle movements go, generally the bulk of all the cattle move from August until December 1st. And, and that's when you see even not just my feed yard, but all feed yards are going to stockpile and they're going to have a lot of cattle in that particular time frame. Then they're going to start marketing cattle. And then they will market cattle from spring all the way till probably about the middle part of June. And then you'll see numbers slack off, especially in Nebraska, because of the heat and humidity. So is it fair to say that you're at your peak size now? Yeah, I mean, sure we are. And, and you know, we haven't, we haven't turned cattle out into any temporary fencing or anything like that because, again, in the process of, of actually gathering the cattle up, you know, we have to have the cattle in here so that we can adhere to what we call our health protocols. We have to get shots in the cattle. We have to get the cattle weaned. We have to get them used to eating. And so you have to you you basically have to lock those cattle up at that point and teach them how to eat and how to drink and and how to be you know productive. And and and, and as we get down the road here, you know, we can start turning cattle out and and then and then we'll decide again. We'll look at the markets and see what the markets are telling us to do. Okay, and um, I think the guy from the DEQ said that the permit that you were asking for, which you you would ask for your maximum amount mm -hmm. was 6,000. Right. Yeah, and then see that's a that's a real gray area too because you know when the DEQ was out here I mean I asked them, I asked them point blank, I mean how many cattle should I apply for? <clears throat> well it, as far as the state's concerned as, as long as as long as you're complying with the state I mean they, they could issue me a permit for 15,000 head out here. Now can I run 15,000 head? No I cannot. I don't have the manpower I don't have the equipment, and, and, and to be honest about it, I don't want the work. I've got enough to do. And, and, and so then there was some cute confusion as far as that goes. Well, you know, essentially to comply with Hall County, you know, which would probably get us in that, you know, 3,500 to 5,000 range, I, I think those are reasonable numbers. Uh, but they're kind of restricting you to 2,000 at this point? Well, that yeah, and, 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 you know, and there's some discrepancies. I mean, I, I had a neighbor that actually built too close to me, uh, and, and that hasn't been investigated, and, and uh, you know, they, it seems like to me they just want to ignore, you know, I mean, I, I've got rights too, right? I mean, I, I deserve to make a living, and I'm, not, and I'm not hurting anybody out here. I mean, this is a well-run, well-managed business. 
you know, we started this with nothing, zero. I can count on probably one hand the operations in this state that have been started from scratch. This is one of them. We, t we, we, we take our business very seriously. We're, we are very, very good at what we do. And, and, and to be honest about it, I, th I think it's a crime. I, I think it is cr a crime. So you're saying that you were here before the neighbor, one of the neighbors that's complaining. Absolutely. The house that he, he Absolutely. What, what year was that house built, do you think? You started well, it was, it was uh, placed in there probably six to eight months after I bought this crown and started construction on this yard. So it's his responsibility to be a half a mile away from me. It's not my responsibility. I was here first. Is he on the Hall or Howard County line? He's, in the, he's in the Hall County Hall line. County. Mm -hmm. You know, I was actually advised by the county, the county people down there to wait to apply for the conditional use permits because they were talking about changing the laws. I was actually advised by those people to do that. Who advised you? <clears throat> Some of the officials in Hall County. Like Chad Navity or Dean Humphrey or? Oh uh, yeah, somebody like that. Chad Navity? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to talk to somebody about changing your regulations. I, who should I talk to? Well, that's a good that question. I advised you. Um, you know, I guess, you know, you start with your supervisors <laughs> and then you end up with oh, Dune. Oh, You know, Shupin and then Navity or uh, Dune and and uh, I actually had applied for the permits and this summer and uh, they started the process and then they said, well, why don't you just wait because we're talking about, you know, doing some stuff on the zoning. And so then they withdrew the application. Did you get your money back? Did yeah, you... I got my money back. Okay. Yeah. Was that like one of those $500 yeah. permits? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I have a copy of your June application. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. All right, so I think the biggest question, though, the county board had really uh, some of the supervisors who maybe have it, not Shupin, who's been more involved with this, but how is it that you didn't didn't know that you either needed a county permit and or a state permit? How can you be in this? How can you be in this business and not know that, that you need those things? Um, well, I'm not a politician. <laughs> I mean, I work. I don't, you know, I, I mean, you know, I start at six o'clock in the morning, five o'clock sometimes, and I don't, I don't get done till seven or eight o'clock at night. I mean, I knew, I knew there were some things that we had to do. <clears throat> and so, you know, we started that process. And then, and, and, and as you dig into it, you know, you know, you get a little smarter and you find out that you need to do some things. And I, I don't think it, I don't think, I, I think the situation is blown out of proportion. I don't think it is actually that, I mean, granted, and, and, and I suppose they take disrespect to that because they say I'm breaking the law, but, but it's not like I've been hiding from those people. I've been down there 15 times trying to talk to them. You know, I've been forthcoming. I've been honest. I've been telling them what I've been doing. I went down there, you know, in good faith. I mean, it's not like I'm trying to hide from them. It's not like I'm a big rebel. I think county attorney said yesterday he thinks you have 3,000 heads. Yeah, right give or you? take. Yeah, okay. yeah. I hear one talking right now. <laughs> okay, so where do you go from here? I, you know, I'm not sure. I, I you know, I, I, I hoped it, had, it wasn't going to come to a big fight between lawyers, but it looks like I'm really pushed into a corner and I don't have a lot of choice. <clears throat> You know, I, I've expressed that time and time again down there, too. I mean, I'm a reasonable guy. Can you talk a little bit, too, about the permit that you have filed for with DEQ? Right. Um, it looked like maybe you, is it Steve Simba Consulting or something? Right. Uh, talk about what that plan is, what your intentions are to meet the regulations of that permit. Are you planning on putting in a sewage lagoon or something? Well, I, that's, that's basically up to the DEQ. I mean, the, the, you know, they will they will essentially be the uh, you know the decision maker on that. So you'll do whatever they. Yeah, I ha yeah, I have to, I have to. Okay. Do you have any river or anything that runs through no. here? 
No. Okay, so it's all just straight ground. Right, right. You know, and we, I mean, we, we, we haul our manure out on a timely basis. Um, you know, we didn't, I guess until all this stuff went down, I didn't really know we had any problems out here. What else do you want people to know? I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I think he said everything that I was wondering, so answered every question that I had. You know, I, I guess I don't, you know, I mean, I, I kind of feel like I'm being treated like a villain, and, and, mm. and, I, and, I've, and I've never really had you know, my time in front of the supervisors to, you know, to plead my case. And, 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 and to me, I, I, don't, I don't think that's fair because there are two sides to every story. At least. Yeah, at least. Uh, are you going to ask for time before the supervisors? Yeah, I, I guess, you know, I've got to investigate the process. And uh, I mean, I don't know how all that stuff works down there, but, but I, I would assume that, you know, you know, in general, I mean, <clears throat> when you want to get right down to it, I mean, this really isn't all about me. It's about the cattle feeding business in the whole county. You know, a business that would probably gross, you know, 800 to a billion dollars. And in, 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 in my mind, I mean, that's a viable business in Hall County when, you know, you just laid off, what, 1,200 people at New Holland and 600 people at Chief. I mean, you know, we, you know, we buy all local products, right? We, we buy corn from the area farmers. When my guys make money, what do they do? They go down to Grand Island and spend it. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a circle. How much did you say the, the money? You said 800 to 1 billion? Well, yeah, the cattle, the, 1 the, the or 1 billion. billion. I, I would guess it'd be, it'd be close to a billion dollars if you want to. billion to 1 billion. Yeah. For the whole state? For, no, for, for Hall oh, County. For Hall County, wow. I mean, you take uh, Baxter's down there at yeah. 30,000 head, and they turn that inventory over two times a year and put together, you know, another 15 feed yards my size. I mean, uh, the gross sale is probably the number one business in the, in the county. <clears throat> and, and, and I just, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm just amazed that... It, uh, in a state where agriculture basically drives the the economy, that there is no respect for it. So, how exactly close are you to, to make this not work for the county regulations? I know it has to be a uh, quarter mile if you're under a thousand, and right. half mile for a thousand. So, right. your the nearest residence, how close is that? Like twenty three hundred feet. Is that in? Hall County or Howard County? That's in, it's, that's in Hall County. So, I mean, it's close. Yeah, I mean, it's, we're splitting hairs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and, and my problem with the regulations, I mean, I'm not trying to break the law here, but, you know, if you tell me that I can run a single-strand electric wire fence on a cornfield and dump a thousand cattle out there for 45 days, and then and then if I lock one up, you you, you want to chastise me? I mean, really? How consistent is that? It do, it, it really doesn't make any sense to me. And then I can get portable bunks and I can feed them in a corner and leave the manure two foot deep in the corner. I mean, come on. I mean, let's, I'm just trying to be sensible and be but realistic. You don't do that, though, do you? You well, no. I mean, we clean our manure up, yeah. but we do run cattle out in the cornfields. Yeah. Um, so, who's who's the neighbor? with 2300. Is that Steve Clark? Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. And then, how far is Casey Hankey then? Well, the you know Casey is about uh, just just short of a half a mile. I mean, it's within probably a hundred feet of okay. being a half a mile away from me. In the, in the new pens for a half a mile this summer. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How often do you use the new pens? Are we haven't even used them yet. Okay. Are they what you would consider the temporary holdings or? No, though they're, they're permanent pens. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So improvements on this land, how much have you put into building this from scratch? Millions. Okay. <laughs> Do you live um, on this site here? I, I live exactly one half mile away from here. In the Hall County side. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we I mean we live right here. I mean we don't we don't have flies. We you know I mean I'm not gonna say that it, at times we don't have, you know, a feedlot odor here. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's wet. Um but you know, we're we're living out here. I mean we sit out out, out, out on our patio in the summertime and we're not flat swatting flies. What do you do with the manure that you take out of the out of the pens? We 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 spread it on the ground that we farm, and then and then we have other farmers that contract with us to take the manure. Okay, uh, do you have like corn or? Yeah, corn? yeah. All right. And and they're very in the in the in the, in the you know as far as the other farmers are very supportive of it. So do you have to do you give it away or do you sell it? No, we sell it. Yeah. Yeah. Commodity. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah.